are continuing with the, the topic on infrastructure that is the part 3 in, uh, in this video we will be discussing uh, two or three very few important schemes associated with the ports as well as shipping ok. So, there have been a uh, few important current affair associated with the ports and shipping we will discuss in this video ok. So, again it is uh, ports and shipping is another very important major infrastructure of our economy uh, and it is uh, this we will see that what are the uh, strength as well as the weaknesses of this particular sector and what are the government initiatives taken in this sector ok. Now regarding uh, we will start with shipping, uh, survey starts like this ok, survey says that shipping is an important indicator of uh, commodity trade of any country ok. Uh, shipping is an important indicator of India's trade, mainly commodity trade with any other, means with uh, of any particular country. And uh, if you see uh, the significance of ports or shipping, since India is having approximately or near to 7,517 kilometer of coastline. And India is having 7500 approximately 7517 kilometer coastline and around 200 ports. So, both major and non major around 12 major ports and uh, uh, other non major ports are there. So, with 200 major uh, sorry with 200 ports and uh, approximately 7500 kilometer of coastline as well as India's strategic location ok. Uh, India has a strategic location in the sense that ok as well as competitive advantage over uh, since most of the cargo ship because most of the uh, if you see in most of the cargo ships uh, that sail between East Asia and America most of the cargo ships that sail between East Asia and America as well as Europe and Africa pass through Indian territorial waters ok. So, majority of the cargo ships from these regions pass through Indian territorial waters. So, because of that Indian shipping industry as well as uh, ports have become very significant and this can be a very important uh, another sunrise sector for the economic growth of our country. Okay. Now, regarding the shipping okay, India's trade okay, 95 percentage of India's trade by volume. 95 percentage of trade by volume and 68 percentage in terms of value is transported by sea. So, sea understand the significance of uh, the sea transport mainly through shipping ok. So, India's global trade 98 95 percentage of global trade is through sea transport and if you go by value terms it is 68 percentage ok. And now there is a new trend see I told you we have around uh, 200 ports, uh, we have both major and non major ports and there is a survey says that we are seeing a new trend especially in relation to non major ports. The share of non major ports have increased in the last few years. So, in the last few years the non major ports are gaining more share of cargo handling. So, non major ports is handling more cargo compared to major ports. And if you see the contribution of uh, uh, non-major ports to total traffic, it is have increased to 43.5 percentage in 2016 from uh, 28.6. So, in 2007, the, the traffic, the cargo traffic handled by non-major ports was 28.6, but within a 10 year span, it have increased to 43.5 percentage. So, when we talk about the ports, major port along with the major ports, non major ports have become very important because now non major the share of non major ports in cargo handling have increased or it is increasing. So, in all, so for that we require uh, we need to uh, uh, develop non major port as well as we have to enhance their efficiency as well as operational capacity ok. So, the focus will be to connect the non major ports with hinterland ok. So, earlier the focus was to connect the major ports with hinterland that is the Indian part of the country. So, here since the non major ports importance is increasing day by day 
that the non-major ports also have to be well connected to the hinterland because uh, the non-major ports cargo handling is quite increasing. Now, uh, so we know the significance of shipping uh, industry or shipping sector in relation to our global trade in relation to value as well as in terms of volume and it's uh, how shipping or coastal uh, because of the coastal line and strategy location uh, shipping industry can play a strategic as well as very important role for the growth of our nation. Now, but the shipping India's shipping sector is facing many problems. Okay, so survey have highlighted few problems. Just have an idea about it. So, if you look into the the present shipping freight rate, okay, globally, uh, the maritime freight rate uh, in most shipping segments is now enduring volatility, or there is a volatile freight rate is moving on because of overall downward movement, because of slowdown in cargo movement. Okay the free trade is also coming down. So this is mainly due to so why there is slowdown in cargo movement or slowdown in global trade. There are one is that the weak demand in the, in the entire area, I mean, I means throughout the world, okay. So there is a weak demand. So there is a gradual slowdown in trade as well as, so along with the weak demand, there is weak, you are seeing a continuous fleet growth, it means the shipping, the new ships are increasing. So there are new ships are increasing, there are high fleet growth but weak demand. So this has pushed the, the few, uh, this fleet utilization or shipping utilization further down and intensified a deflationary pressure on the free trades in most markets except the tanker. So tankers are exceptions, except the tankers, almost all other shipping segments is facing this deflationary pressure or lower free trade. So that is the one major uh, issue or problem facing the shipping sector especially for India and then if you look into the India's uh, share okay Indian ships share in carriage of India's overseas trade so, okay so Indian ships share in Indian uh, overseas trade in India's overseas trade how declined that too sharply from 40 percentage to 7 percentage okay so in the late 80s okay 1980s in the late 1980s indian ships used to carry 40 percentage of india's uh, trade now especially india's overseas trade now that has been sharply declined to 7 percentage that is another major concern okay so indian ships like we have discussed in the last class okay regarding civil aviation where indian domestic airlines losing space in international travel Similarly, Indian ships is also losing space in India's overseas trade and it has declined sharply. So that is the another concern. Uh, another problem is that Indian ships, Indian ships are aging. So there is a, uh, the existing Indian fleet is also aging <coughs> and the average age of Indian ships have increased from 15 years in 1999 to the average age of the Indian ships is 19.3 years. So aging for Indian ships is also another a concern uh, facing the shipping sector. So, in order to address uh, the shipping problem as well as to increase the tonnage of Indian ships, uh, the government have taken certain measures that is recently the GST rate for bunger fuel used in the GST rate for bunger fuel used in Indian flag vessels. Okay. So be very clear, clear okay in shipping this flag state is very concept of flag state is very important I have shared an article on it okay. So normally a ship have to register to any country. So which to which country a particular ship register that become their flag okay. So they have to uh, use that particular country's flag. So, so normally Indian flag means a ship which is registered with in, in India okay. So uh, so Indian flag vessels, okay, Indian flag vessels, only for Indian flag vessels, the GST for bunger fuel have reduced from 18 percentage to 5 percentage. We know that the, the aim is to increase the tonnage of Indian ships, okay, the, the, the tonnage carried by Indian ships to so that the trade, uh, the, the sharp decline in India's overseas trade by Indian shipping uh, sector can be addressed. So that is why GST rate have reduced only for for this bunker fuel for Indian uh, flag vessels and for Indian seafarers okay 
employed on Indian flagships. Okay, Indian seafarers employed on Indian flagships. Their tax regime is now brought on parity with foreign flagships. Okay, earlier uh, the tax on Indian seafarers on Indian flagships was higher. Now that have been brought down. Now there is a parity between Indian flagship uh, seafarers as well as foreign flagship seafarers, especially for Indian seafarers. Okay. Now, there the, the government have removed obstacles in the smooth implementation of India control tonnage scheme. Under this scheme, Indian companies can directly own ships in foreign flags. Okay. So, there have been uh, a bit of liberalization in, in the sense that Indian companies can own foreign flag ships. Foreign flag ships means a ship which is registered not in India in some other foreign country. Then easing many procedural complaints. Okay, this is a, a normal trend as part of us our as of our ease of doing business. We have uh, eased many procedural compliances like ship registration, procuring chartering permission, payment of chartering fees online. All have been done in an easy manner. And regarding fuel, see in a uh, fuel tax free for uh, Indian flag, all Indian flagships or coastal vessels engaged in container trade so all indian flag coastal vessels all indian flag coastal vessels engaged in container trade for them the fuel tax will be free made free so there will be no fuel tax on indian flag coastal vessels engaged in container trade then also the government is giving income tax benefit to indian seafarers walking on indian ships thereby making the cost of so there will be income tax benefit for indian seafarers working on indian flagships so that the cost of personnel become more competitive for Indian shipping industry. So these are the measures taken by the government to address the decline of India's overseas trade uh, for Indian ships or Indian flagships. Now this is another very prominent uh, uh, topic under your uh, topics uh, shipping that is coastal shipping. Okay, so I told you India is having a large cost line and coastal shipping as well as inland water transport or inland waterways have become very prominent and significant and you can expect a question related with India's inland water or national waterways or the first important project taken under the uh, inland water transport that is Jal Vigas Mark project, we will discuss about it. Okay, now along with this, uh, this coastal shipping, okay, so shipping within India's coast, a vision for coastal shipping Tourism and regional de development has been prepared by the government to increase the share of coastal or inland waterways transport. Okay, inland waterways transport or coastal transport more from 7 percentage to 10 percentage. So, the government want to increase the coastal transport or inland uh, waterways transport from 7 percentage to 10 percentage by 20. 1920 so that is by March 31st 2020 okay uh, so presently the coastal cargo handled by the ports in India in the 1670 financial year is 189.7 million ton it's a fact not important for you okay now what are the key element of this scheme which uh, aims to increase the coastal or inland water transport from 7 percentage to 10 percentage okay three important elements are there one is the development of coastal shipping as a, an end to see as an end to end supply chain end to end from where uh, in the sense that okay coastal shipping development will be seen from a holistic perspective not from one dimension okay so that's what is mean by development of coastal shipping as an end to end uh, supply chain so from we will not only using the end we'll be using the full supply chain for uh, through this uh, coastal shipping now another thing is that integration of inland water transport with coastal route development of regional centers. So the regional, uh, the coastal route along with this inland water transport, coastal route, the coastal route will be developed as regional centers so that there will be to generate cargo for coastal traffic. Okay, so the to generate cargo for coastal traffic, to generate cargo for coastal traffic, the regional centers along the coastal route will be developed. Now, uh, as part of pro promoting tourism, the de development of lighthouse tourism will also be promoted. So, that these, these are the three key elements under to promote <coughs> inland water transport or coastal transport. <coughs> now, 
what are the major problems or impediments associated with coastal shipping one is that the extra cost additional cost due to poor connectivity we don't have first mile and last mile connectivity for coastal shipping <coughs> so because of that there is an additional cost for this coastal shipping <coughs> and presently there is high duties on bunger fuel and other taxes for coastal shipping so that has to be addressed and see uh, re, the when coastal ship take a cargo from one des, one area to its destination on return it has to come empty so this is a big problem okay absence of assured return cargo that results in so there is no return cargo for most of the coastal shipping vessels so that results in higher cost of transportation through coastal shipping so this is the reason why the shipping industry is not till now have not been interested in uh, uh, coastal shipping so that's why this co uh, the coastal route development uh, will make a difference to it and there is another big problem regarding the cost cost additional cost of coastal transportation by indian ships as compared to foreign ships so when you compare indian ships to foreign ships especially in relation to coastal transportation we can see that the operating cost of indian ships are very very higher compared to foreign ships like by uh, something 24 percentage the operating cost of indian ships is 24 percentage higher than foreign ships and the survey have uh, split that uh, higher cost by on duty of bung uh, the bunger duty or tax on bunger that is 9 percentage income tax on sea forever is 6 percentage additional cost service tax of 1 percentage capital gains tax of 5 percentage and tonnage tax of 3 percentage additionally the cost due to inefficiency of indian shipping companies is 6 percentage so this has to be addressed in order to promote coastal shipping because there is an additional cost by indian ships by 24 percentage because of these factors if and only these problems are addressed only we can promote coastal shipping and inland transport inland waterway transport now what are the steps taken by the government to promote inland waterways transport okay inland waterways transport okay several steps have been taken okay and one among them is the 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 union legislature parliament have enacted an act what is called as national waterways act 2016 and what it has done is it has declared 111 national waterways so already we had five national waterways to that five natural national waterways additionally 106 national waterways have been enacted and enforced okay so presently we have 101 national waterways and that has been enabled because of this national waterways act 2016 so already we have an existing five national waterways and 106 additional inland waterways have been uh, enacted by this act now among these there is a high possibility that upc can ask a question related or match the pair question related with national waterways and the area or the uh, the lane through which this national inland waterways passes through okay so please uh, you can't learn all the 100, uh, 111 national waterways what all national waterways is mentioned in the economic survey you give high importance to it okay so the first national waterway through river ganga it's been implemented through a very important inland waterway pro project what is called as Jal Marg Vigas project. This itself can be a potential question for you. They can ask you what is this Jal Marg Vigas project or where it is being implemented, who is implementing this project. Okay, So basically it's an inland water transport project through the first national waterway. So this, a, this is a Jal Marg Vigas project is a large integrated large integrated inland water transport project and have been launched with the purpose of ensuring navigation to uh, 1500 to 2000 ton vessels okay navigation to 5500 to 2000 ton vessels by developing infrastructure so this project will ensure develop infrastructure for ensuring navigation of uh, 1500 to 2000 ton vessels and a fair way of uh, 2.2 to 3 meters depth between the area is very important between Varanasi, our Prime Minister's uh, constituency, and Haldia. So Varanasi and Haldia during this from Varanasi and Haldia where Ganga flows through the through this National Waterway One, this Jal Marg Vigas project will be implemented mainly for navigation as well as developing infrastructure as well as a fairway of 2.2 to 3 meters depth 
will be done for this region that is from Varanasi to Haldia covering a distance of so the distance covered for this project is 1380 kilometer that's why it is a large integrated project okay so for 1380 kilometer from Varanasi to Haldia uh, the uh, this project will be implemented and it is estimated that it will cost around 5369 crore very 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 important for you okay and this project is implemented by Inland Waterways Authority of India. This project Jal Mar Vegas project is implemented by Inland Waterways Authority of India and is to be completed in six years with technical and investment support of World Bank. So World Bank is providing technical and investment support. Okay. So these points you please uh, keep note of it. Very important. Jal Mar Vegas project on National Waterway 1 River Ganga from Hal Varanasi to Haldia. <coughs> Now, uh, as see, we are continuing with the uh, inland water, what are the steps taken by the government on National Waterway 2, National Waterway 2, so National Waterway 1 is Ganga, River Ganga, National Waterway 2 is River Bem Brahmaputra, a Roro service have commenced between Dubri and Hatsingi Mari, Mari in July 2017, again by inland water, so an inland water authority of India vessel is providing Roro services between these two places Dubri and Hatsini Mari. So that also you please note down on. So National Waterway to uh, River Brahmaputra. Then eight new national waterways have project have been taken up for development in 2000, in the year 2017-18. Eight new national waterways development have started. So these eight national waterways can be very see everyone it is easy to remember water one national waterway one and two river ganga or river brahmaputra but there is a possibility that upc can ask a question from these see instead of studying all the uh, 111 national waterways study these eight national waterways because this development started in 2017-18 so all these eight national waterways was in news okay so locate your map and learn it okay so national waterway 16 barak river and then three in goa in three in goa rivers uh, this national waterway is coming that is in Kumbarjwa, Mandovi and Zuari, National Waterway 11, National Waterway 68 and National Waterway 27. Please remember the waterway number also, we don't know. Sometimes you basically can be cruel, they will ask you the National Waterway number and the particular river. <coughs> National Waterway 86, River Rub Narayan, National Waterway 97, Sundarbans, National Waterway 9, Alapaya Kottayam, Adrambuja Canal and National Waterway 37, River Gandak. Okay, so these are the eight national waterways development projects have been started. Because of that, it is very important for you. So be, be, be thorough with these eight national waterways. If a question comes, it is a factual question. It, it will make a difference for you. Okay, now <coughs> between, see, uh, since especially to uh, reduce the cargo cost, okay, uh, the logistic cost of cargo between India's mainland and northeast, we have an MOU signed between India and Bangladesh. So because of that, there will be a reduced logistic cost of cargo and facilitate passenger movement between Northeast and mainland. For that, MOU has been signed between India and Bangladesh. That's also important for you. Okay. Now, uh, uh, to provide institutional funding for this uh, national waterways, the government have decided that in 2017-18, it has decided that a uh, 2.5 percentage of the proceeds from central road fund okay so this year's budget have changed the central road fund to central road and infrastructure fund okay so from its proceeds 2.5 percentage from the central road fund now it is central road and infrastructure fund 2.5 percent of the proceeds will be utilized for the development and maintenance of national waterways which is mentioned in your survey very important 2.5 percentage of earlier central road fund now central road and infrastructure fund and in 2017-18, uh, Inland Waterway Authority of India have raised 660 crore from the market by issuing Government of India fully service bond to meet capital expenditure for the development of national waterways. Okay, so 2.5 percentage of central road fund, so road and infrastructure fund will be utilized for national waterways development. That then uh, this eight national waterways, Jalmar Vigas project, all are important under the inland waterways project i am expecting a question from inland waterways project this year now uh, there is a there is a separate heading uh, for 
in your economic survey for shipbuilding and ship repair industry okay shipbuilding and ship repair industry okay survey says that shipbuilding is a manufacturing industry and it has certain unique feature of having 60 in this shipping industry there are there is around 65 percentage value addition which is unique for any manufacturing industry coming from other technology or ancillary industries so 60 percentage of value addition is from other technological or ancillary industries so that is one of the unique feature of this shipping industry and in india there are fact but very important in india there are presently 27 shipyards six owned by the center or central public sector two by the state government and the remaining 19 by the private sector and uh, it is said that uh, directly 30,000 people are employed under the shipping industry and there are many more uh, through indirectly employment is being provided uh, no this is a very factual information but very important mentioned in your survey survey says that shipbuilding industries uh, shipbuilding industry is dominated by three countries so you need to know which are the three countries where shipbuilding is dominated uh, they are south korea china and japan all are east asian countries very, very easy to remember okay south korea china and japan if you you can use this asean plus three that plus three asean plus three is uh, china japan and south korea so these are the three dominant ship building countries okay and which together constitute 90 percentage share of the ship building market so please note down this since India is located strategically on the international trade route, it can attract ships flying from, we already discussed it, it attracts ships flying from west to east in the trade route for its ship repair industry. So, India's ship repairing industry, because of its strategic location, uh, in, because of its style, India's ship repairing industry can benefit because many ships passes through India, through this uh, India's uh, waters. So, when ship passes, for, for ship repairs, India's these shipyards can be used, utilized. The geostrat the, the geostrategic location of India, abundance of labor, quality of work are the strength of ship repair business in India. So these are the advantages of ship repair industry business in India. And there is also a scope for shipbuilding industry that can be unlocked. We have huge potential under the shipbuilding industry, which will not only create a strong manufacturing base but also give millions of jobs or create create uh, employment opportunities so, so these are the points just note down the dominant three countries for shipbuilding industry and how many shipyards are there uh, the central public sector private sector etc so just have an idea regarding the shipbuilding industry important for you so so we have discussed about shipping now we are going to ports so here just have an idea we have around 200 ports uh, a uh, lot of non-major ports are there. Presently, 12 major ports are there. One is uh, will be coming as the 13th one. Okay, so that's all our factual thing. So what we'll, economic survey have not gone to that part. The economic survey have given importance to port development or port-led development and a very important scheme called Sagar Mala is being discussed. Okay, now it says that in 2016-17, the cargo traffic uh, at Indian ports have increased by 5.9% and 6.9 percentage growth in major ports and 4.2 percentage growth in uh, non-major ports okay now they, these are the certain measures taken by the government to improve the performance of major ports okay so what are the steps taken by the government to improve the performance of major ports of our country one is major ports have been benchmarked to international the major ports have been benchmarked to international standards and 116 initiatives were identified okay and uh, 66 have been implemented and the remaining will be implemented by 2019 okay so the first initiative is now the major ports have been benchmarked to international standards okay second is a very important bill where the the bill have been placed in the parliament that is major ports authorities bill which will be uh, replace the major port trust act 1963 now presently this bill is under the consideration of the departmental standing committee once this bill is passed by the uh, parliament it will modernize the institutional structure of major ports okay very important initiative now this this radio frequency identification tag or radio frequency identification system uh, have been introduced in major ports to reduce the this dwell time transaction time and ease congestion uh, in nine major uh, so in presently nine major airports have implemented this 
radio frequency identification system for the containers. So that will reduce the dwell time, transaction time and ease congestion in these major ports and the remaining major ports this will be implemented by end of March. So it's expected that this is completed by March 2018. Already the time period is over. And also the direct port delivery as well as direct port entry initiated at major ports for exim containers that is export and import containers this for export and import containers direct port and delivery and direct port entry have been initiated mainly in our major ports so these are the initiatives taken to promote major ports in india now comes the most important topic under the ports there is a high possibility that okay so udan under civil aviation bharat mala under road Sagar Mala under port. You expect a question from any of these. Okay. So, Sagar Mala is say one of the biggest flagship or the major flagship scheme of Ministry of Shipping which try to promote development. How, what type of development? Port, port led development. This is a key fact, key word. So, this initiative of Ministry of Shipping and we say it's port led development through harnessing India's coastal line that is 7500 coastal line 14500 navigable waterways we know that around presently now the government having 111 waterways so it will harness India's entire coastline entire may uh, navigable waterways as well as India's strategic location on international maritime trade routes so <clears throat> by using India's location strategic location by utilizing india's coastal line by utilizing india's inland navigable waterways the ministry of shipping have envisaged a development a port led development through harnessing these initiate through these coastlines waterways and india's strategic location this is the major aim of this scheme sagar mala scheme is all about okay basically it has made many components which the survey have not covered for example one of the major components is for having port infrastructure then port connectivity etc okay even uh, it also have uh, the scheme also try to skill uh, the 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 coastal people mainly ship uh, the fisherman folks uh, so that their employment and other related development also can happen so it is basically a port led development in through infrastructure as well as port connectivity scheme okay so the main vision of this Sagar, the survey says that the main vision of this scheme or program is to reduce the logistic cost for international as well as domestic trade so for international as well as domestic trade reduce the logistic cost is the main vision of Sagar Mala program with minimal infrastructural investment okay now under the Sagar Mala program or pro uh, this program 508 projects have been selected and it is estimated we require 8 lakh crore for its implementation and this can be implemented in the next 20 years through 8 lakh crore investment in the next 20 years this can be this program can be completed and these projects are will be implemented primarily through private players so basically this will be implemented by the private players or through public private partnership mode so these are the major points mentioned in the economic survey about Sagar Mala program but you, you uh, I have shared many articles on Sagar Mala program please read two or three articles because it's a potential question. <coughs> now uh, a road map also have been created for increasing India's port capacity uh, to 3000 uh, million tons okay uh, this is a capacity okay 3000 plus to capture the project traffic of 2500 million uh, uh, this uh, calculated by 2025 okay uh, so just have an idea that uh, the the a roadmap for increasing india's port capacity have been uh, developed to be achieved by 2025 now for all the 12 major ports okay the survey says that for all the 12 major ports a master plans have been finalized and from the this port master plan 131 port capacity expansion projects there are 30, 131 ex, uh, projects with project cost of 85,346 crore have been identified for implementation for the next 20 year under this program.
okay so just have an idea what this agar mala program is all about it's basically a port led development scheme by harnessing india's coastline navigable waterways and strategic location it has major components like developing port infrastructure port connectivity as well as skilling the uh, coastal communities okay so just be clear with that and please revise it also and read if you have time read the article uh, which i have shared in your telegram group so that's regarding ports and shipping from your economic survey thank you